you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz where the aim of the game is to find the most obscure answer possible. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hello, my name's Dawn. This is my daughter Jodie and we're from West Bromwich in the West Midlands. Couple number two. Hello, my name's Stevie. This is my wife, Kirsty, and we're from Glasgow. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Abby. This is my friend Sarah. We're from Blackpool. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm from Manchester, and this is my stepmum, Nipa, from York. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. A very, very warm welcome to Pointless. It's lovely to have you with us. We'll get a chance to chat a bit more throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He's too well-known to be a Pointless answer, but too obscure to be a question. It's my Pointless friend. <laughs> it's Richard. Hiya. Hiya. Everybody. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. They seem a nice bunch, don't I they? I think they do. This will be fun, but what a show we had last time. They'll yeah. do something to top that. We have five pointless answers yeah. in one round, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. In our roundabout, uh, in about countries. And funny enough, Jodie almost gave us another pointless answer because she yeah. said Dominican Republic, which was a pointless answer, but unfortunately she didn't stop there. She, she said Dominican Republic of Congo. Uh, and that was an incorrect yeah. answer, it's not real country, it's yeah. two countries. So a lot of money was added to that jackpot last time. Sophie and Gary took it home with double award winning um, films, Gandhi yes. they got. Very nice. um, so it's a lovely show, very, oh, very impressive. One of the greats. One of the all time yeah. greats, but this is, I mean, look at this lot. I know. So bright, oh, look raring to go. Aren't they? Yeah, like eight greyhounds. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Um, Sophie and Gary won the jackpot last time, as you'll have gathered, so today's jackpot starts off at a demure £1,000. There it is. Uh, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. <laughs> I know you know this, but I just have to tell you, all the same, the pair with the highest score at the end of each round will be eliminated. So, as you know, you just have to keep your scores as low as you possibly can. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category today is... Science. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? Mm -hmm. uh, whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and our science question concerns... Bees in biology. Richard. Yep, uh, we're going to give you seven clues on each pass to things in biology. The answers all begin with the letter B. We're also going to show you how many uh, letters there are in each of the answers. So seven on the first board, seven on the second, 14 and all to have a go at home. Good luck. OK, so what are the answers to these biological poses? They all begin with a B, the answers, that is. And here is our first board of clues. Muscle in the upper arm that works antagonistically with the triceps, six. Britain's biggest land predator, a nocturnal mammal with the scientific name Meles Meles, six. Substance, sometimes called carb milliurea, which gives its name to a test for proteins, six. Organ in the human body that is the seat of intelligence and memory, five. Fruit of the genus Musa that is high in potassium and a source of vitamins B6 and C, six. Stock of animals or plants within a species developed by deliberate selection, five. And underground plant organ that allows a plant to survive from one growing season to the next, four. Let me read those again. Muscle in the upper arm that works antagonistically with the triceps, six. Britain's biggest land predator, a nocturnal mammal with the scientific name Meles Meles, Six, substance sometimes called carbamiliaria, which gives its name to a test for proteins. Six, organ in the human body that is the seat of intelligence and memory. Five, fruit of the genus Musa that is high in potassium and a source of vitamins B6 and C. Six, stock of animals or plants within a species developed by deliberate selection. Five, and underground plant organ that allows a plant to survive from one growing season to the next. Four, dawn. Welcome back to Pointless. Hello. Uh, remind us a bit about yourself. What, what did you get up to? I'm an office administrator for a waste transfer station. I deal with the environment agency and vehicle maintenance for VOSA and things like that. So. OK, so this is finding where things go on to. Finding, yes, yes. And do you sort through everything as it comes in? Does not everything personally, get, but not, no. But, but uh, within, <laughs> yes. the, within the station? Yes, yes. That's very Then we good. send it to the um, appropriate... So quite a lot of it gets recycled, does yes. it? Yes, yes. Very good indeed. Now, to the biology, Dawn. To the biology, what are you going to go for? I'm going to go for one that I know. Uh, the first one, muscle in the upper arm that works the triceps, bicep. Bicep? Yes. Bicep, says Dawn. Let's see biceps. how many of our 100 people said <laughs> bicep. Or biceps. Biceps. I think we know what you mean. <laughs> yes, biceps. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It's right. 
51. Not bad at all. Great start to the round. Well done, Dawn. I sometimes think my biceps and triceps work too antagonistically. They never <laughs> shut up. Do you know what I mean? Always at it. Oh, goodness me. Yeah. Oh. Arguing about I don't even know what they're talking about. No. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Um, now, Stevie, welcome to Pointless. Good to have you here. Uh, here from Glasgow. Yes. Uh, not just Glasgow, but the most fantastically named part of Glasgow. Where are you from? Cambers Lang. Cambers Lang. And uh, what keeps you busy in Cambers Lang? Steve? Yeah, I'm a supervisor in a large cash and carry in Cambers Lang. Very good indeed. And uh, what are your interests? I love football, love playing football, and recently took up golf. Very good. OK, Stevie, biology. Got to say, it's not my strong point. Oh, no. It's going to be tough, this, because There's there are few, some... I think I know. There are a couple of specialist ones in there, I think, yeah. as well, aren't there? What is the most obscure one you think you can go for? Uh, say the second one, and say badger. Badger. Mellers, mellers. Uh, let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said badger. It's right. 51 is our only score on the board at this point. You pass 51. 31. <laughs> Good score, Stevie. Well done. I do love Great Britain. I genuinely do. But honestly, if a badger is your largest land predator, I mean, come on. That's why they don't do safaris to Britain, isn't it? I think it is, yeah. Imagine a badger in any other country in the world. We go, no, yeah, I'm the biggest land predator. It'd be no, laughed you know. out of town. Yeah, yeah. You didn't go to Africa as a badger. Yeah. Oh. There's not many openings for badgers in Africa, are there? <laughs> I don't know. No. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, now, Abby, welcome to Pointless. Great to have you here from Blackpool. And uh, <laughs> what do you do, Abby? Um, so, I've just finished a master's in English literature and I'm now living in the lakes, working at the only pub in the country that's owned and run by the National Trust. That... Oh, exactly. Ooh, yeah. That's just the nicest thing ever. Shall, I tell you what, shall we? Shall we all? Shall we all just, just go up there. to the lakes? That's a How long have you been there? Only about three months. Wow. Ooh, they'll all be watching. Yeah. They'll all be in the pub now. Shh, shh. Actually, so will you, of course, because yeah, you'll be <laughs> back there by then. Um, how, wow, how lovely. And uh, how long are you going to be in the lakes, Jig? Um, Indefinitely. Are you writing all the while? Uh, well, I've just applied for a PhD, so we'll see what happens right. there. And... OK. So all that time up at the lakes. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Oh, and some porky scratchings as well, please, Abby. <laughs> uh, so, Abby, what would you like to go for on our board? I think I know that a couple, but I'm going to go for the fruit of the genus Musa that is high in potassium and a source of vitamins B6 and C and, say, banana. Banana, says Abby. Let's see how many of our 100 people said banana. It's right. 51's our high score. 31 is our low score. You pass 51. 43 is where you end up. Well played, Abby. In 2016, the Chinese authorities, um, they banned people from eating bananas in a seductive manner on social media. <gasps> oh, I wish I'd started that noise with an empty lung. Sorry, <laughs> I could have done it for longer. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. here we go. <gasps> That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Uh, ben, welcome to Point. It's good to have you here. Uh, what do you do, Ben? Uh, I've just started a PhD in chemistry. Um, ah, just university. started it? Oh, well, a few months ago. Yeah. A few months ago. And uh, what are your interests, Ben? I do a bit of homebrewing on the side. That's a bit of a hobby of mine. Um, nice, nice to make an IPA every now and again. Is that the, that's, that's the brand you would go for, an IPA? An is IPA, the, is yeah. The, is I think the, that's the... the yes. well, it's my favourite bit. Well, there you are. I'll yeah. tell you what, I'll tell you whose face is telling a million stories and <laughs> neepers. <laughs> Neep. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you said homebrewing, it's just went... Oh, no. <laughs> It's only gone wrong a couple of times. So. <laughs> but if you're, you're a chemistry PhD, your homebrew must be amazing. Well, I'm a computational chemistry PhD, so it's... Less it's amazing. Awful. Less <laughs> amazing. <laughs> uh, now, Ben, you're the last person to have this board. I think you'll know all of these answers. Please fill them in. Uh, you're thinking wrongly. <laughs> <laughs> I know two of them. Um, so the organ is the brain, and that bottom one, I think, is bulb. I feel like I should know the substance, but it's not coming to me. <sighs> so I'm going to go with... Bulb for the underground plant organ. OK, you're going to go for bulb, says Ben. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said bulb. It's right, 51, still our high score. Still our high score, 45 for bulb. Not bad, Ben. Yeah, I had trouble with bulb. I couldn't work it out. I was looking for something more obscure, I think. No, I had that one. It's the other side. Yeah, I, uh, I missed the obvious. Yeah, 45 points for that. 
the organ in the human body. How many points do you think brain score? Oh, you've got to hope high. I can say 87. 88. 88. 88. That's not bad, is not it? Not bad. That's not bad no, at all. Not bad. Well done to our 100. Um, the stock of animals or plants within a species? Brr. Brr. Breed. Oh, uh, breed. Breed. Yeah. Breed. Okay, breed. Well okay, fair enough. In some yes. ways, I gave that to I you. I just, yes. Well, you see, I was thinking of soup. The <laughs> stock of animals. Mm. Uh, nice. That's, that would be broth. Yeah, broth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 21 <laughs> points for that. And this last one, very well done, if you knew this one. It is uh, the Bioret test. Bioret would have scored you two points. There you are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are halfway through our first round. Let's take a look at those scores. 31, the best score of the past, Stevie. Very, very well done to you. Uh, very, very tight-knit group, though. Uh, Travelling up from there to 43, where we find Abby and Sarah. 45 is where we find Ben and Nipa. And then 51, Dawn and Jody. Not too far ahead, but a little bit ahead, though. So, Jody, a little bit of pressure on you. We can't say goodbye to you at the end of the, of the first round for a second time. <laughs> I'm not going to stand for that. Yeah. You must be here for round two. So, uh, good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second Second players, please step up to the podium. OK, let's put seven more biological questions up on the board. And here they are. The answers all begin with a B. Another word for the vertebral column or spine, eight. Term for a plant that completes its life cycle in two growing seasons, eight. Apiculture is the practice of keeping this insect in order to produce honey. Three, illness caused by improperly preserved food that gets its name from the Latin for sausage. Eight, term used for the adult male of various animals, including domestic cattle and whales. Four, Theophrastus is often called the father of this branch of biology, concerned with plants. Six, and greenish-yellow fluid produced by the liver, sometimes called gall. Four, let me read those again. Another word for the vertebral column or spine. Eight, term for a plant that completes its life cycle in two growing seasons. Eight, apiculture is the practice of keeping this insect in order to produce honey. Three, illness caused by improperly preserved food that gets its name from the Latin for sausage. Eight, term used for the adult male of various animals, including domestic cattle and whales. Four, Theophrastus is often called the father of this branch of biology concerned with plants. Six, and greenish yellow fluid produced by the liver, sometimes called gall. Four, Nipa, welcome Hiya. to Pointless. Great to have you here. What do you do, Nipa? I'm a psychiatrist. Uh, and where do you do your psychiatry? In Leeds. In Leeds, very good indeed. And uh, what are your interests? I like running. I'm training for the half marathon this year. Have you done a half marathon before? I've done a ten miler, so I'm okay. just. Up oh, it's the... not too much more, is no, it? No. How did you feel at the end of a ten miler, though? Um, <laughs> very tired. So, um, will so... you will you have done the full half marathon before the full half marathon? Will you've done the thirteen miles before? I'll try. I'll yeah, try. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, good luck with Thank that. Thank you. Uh, there you are on 45. Okay. Um, should you score five or less, then uh, you're definitely through to the next round. Yeah. Well, I can guess most of them, I think, but there's a few that I'm not 100% sure on, so I don't know whether to gamble. So I think I'm just going to go for the last one, which is bile. Bile. Bile, says Nipa. Here is your red line. Fairly academic at this stage, as you're the first to go in this uh, second pass. Let's see how many of our 100 people said bile. <laughs> 67 for bile, taking your total up to 112. Yeah, ox bile soap is a very good stain remover. Mm. Ox bile soup is delicious <laughs> as well. Mm. Mm. I don't think it would be. Mm. That, thank you very much. Uh, so, now, Sarah, welcome to Pointless. Uh, what do you do, Sarah? I'm a student at the University of Leeds. And what are you studying? Maths. Oh, that's fun, though. How's it going? Are you enjoying it? Uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it, but it's tough. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> um, and what sort of things do you like getting up to when you're not working? I like travelling, reading, spending time with my family. Very good indeed. Now, you are on 43, Sarah. I know. High, the high scorers are Nipa and Ben on 112. Mm. 68 or less keeps you in the game. I was actually going to say bile. So I'm just trying to think out of the ones I know which will be the next lowest. I'm going to go second one up from the bottom, botany. Botany. Botany, says Sarah. Here is your red line. Get below that with botany and you are through to the next round. How many people said it? It's right. And you're through. Very well done indeed, Sarah. Look at that, it's a great answer, 26. Just happens to be the lowest score of the round so far. Very well done.
69, by the way, is your total. Yeah, very well done. Um, I don't think Theophrastus is the, uh, the father of botany. I would say it's David Bellamy. Would you not? <laughs> Far more so. He said it better. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, now then, Kirsty, welcome to Pointless. Good to have you here. And what keeps you busy up in Campbell's Lang? Um, I'm, a, um, I'm a scientist <laughs> um, for uh, a water authority in Scotland, but very much chemistry, not biology. So what particularly do you do? Are you looking at the, the, uh, the consistency of the water? I, and the... I, I work in a, <laughs> the wastewater lab in, in organic chemistry, which is about as glamorous as it sounds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess you get used to the sulphurous smell. Yeah, it's not the, it's not the best. Mm. Mm. Some unsightly things come through the door sometimes, but... Through the door? Door! door. Not through the door! <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, yes, you can't be squeamish, can you, on that, no, definitely on that job? Uh, Kirsty, 31 is your score. Brilliant score from Steve in the first pass, so 80 or less keeps you in the game. <sighs> I know a few. There's a couple of think I know, but I'm not that sure of, and I don't really want to risk it. I think I'm just going to go for the top one. Uh, backbone? Backbone. Backbone, says Kirsty. Here is your red line. Get below that with backbone, and you are into round two. How many people said it? Is right. You've done it. Very well done. Very good. 51. 82 is your total. Yeah, the human backbone normally has 33 vertebrae. The Australian python can have up to 600. Wow. So being a snake chiropractor is very good business in very, Australia. Oh, they have very long sessions. Yeah, they really are. Yeah, very long beds as well. <laughs> very long, thin beds. Long, thin beds with a hole for the face. <laughs> <laughs> Little fangs. You getting anywhere nice on your holidays? <laughs> well, I was going to go to the UK, but then I heard about the badges and I've decided I'm going to stay here. <laughs> Uh, Jodie. Yeah. Jodie, welcome back. Welcome back. Remind us what you do, Jodie. I'm a marketing assistant for a classic vehicle company. There we are. And what are your interests? Uh, I like football. I like playing it when I can. Um, I like taking photos, socialising with my friends, just anything really. Biology. How are we, how are we feeling about that? Um, pretty bad. <laughs> OK. Just to put things in context, 60 or less keeps you in the game. 60 or less. Why not just talk us through um, these remaining four? Well, I think I know B, and the others would probably be a guess. Uh, the first one, I'd just have a guess at by season, because it made sense. <laughs> Illness, the only sausage I could think of, like bratwurst, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or like, um, I don't know, boar maybe, but I just don't want to go 100, so I'll go for B. You're going to go for B? Yeah. OK, B, apiculture. Well, here is your red line. You've got to get down to there with B. Can you do it? Let's find out. How many of our 100 people said B? B. It's right. Mm. Oh, no, 75 for B. <laughs> 75, taking your total up to 126. Yeah, that's the ultimate B in biology, B, and it's yeah. the, the biggest scorer up there as well. Um, yeah, you absolutely know. You know the, what an adult male cattle is. It's, it's a bull, and it would have seen you through to the next round as well, because it would have scored 60 points. The illness, I'd love it if you'd said bratwurst. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to go out, uh, do you know that one? Botulism. Botulism, yeah. That would have scored you 20 points, and a plant that completes its life cycle. So biennial. Biennial, yeah. And that would have scored 15. That's the best answer up there. Well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. We are at the end of our first round, which means we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs, and Jodie and Dawn, I'm sorry, it is you. <laughs> this isn't how it was meant to be, but uh, far too soon to be sending you back to West Bromwich. But uh, thank you so That's much for coming to play. It's been great having you here. Jodie and Dawn, thank you so much. Thank you. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Very well done. You've made it through to round two. You'll have noticed that one of our pairs has left. Our only returning pair, in fact. So, uh, yeah, congratulations there. Congratulations to Sarah, our lowest individual scorer in that round. In fact, Abby and Sarah, our lowest combined scorers as well. So, very well done. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this afternoon is... Fashion. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns the Vanity Fair International Best Dressed List 2017. Richard. 
can show you 16 pictures now of people who appeared on one of Vanity Fair's uh, best dress lists in 2017. You just need to recognise anybody in one of these pictures, please. It's going to be embarrassing if there's one of you up there, isn't it? I know. Oh. I know which one it'll be as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you look good in top hat. <laughs> a tweed top hat. A tweed top yeah. hat you've got. It's beautiful. Yeah. Anyway, let's see. You, you may not be well, up there. Um, so we're going to show you an image. As Richard said, you just have to shout out the name when it's your turn of anyone you recognise on that image, OK? And obviously the most obscure answer. Please, here is your image. There we are. Oh, phew, I dodged one there. Not on the, not on the board. OK, Kirsty, I'll give you a moment just to digest that selection. I don't actually know that many. I'm, oh, oh, what's his name again? Oh, I don't know whether to go for it or not because I'm going to get it wrong if I say it. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm going to go for the other one just in case because I can't oh. remember his surname. And oh, it's, right, OK. I'm going to kick myself. Um, I'm going to go for Roger Federer. OK, Roger Federer, says Kirsty. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Roger Federer. It is Roger Federer. 28. <laughs> Not bad at all. Yeah, there he is, famous for wearing sort of tennis clothes, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Like white shorts and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, white shorts. Sort of trainers. And, a, and a trainer, a training shoe. Yeah, yeah. often carries a, uh, a tennis bat. Yes, that's right. He accessorises his, his yeah. tennis look, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah, he really does. Yeah. Thank you very much, Richard. Now, Sarah. Right, I'm really excited <laughs> about this answer because I remember going to see him live when I was about 13. Um, I'm going to go for bottom right corner, Jaden Smith. Jaden Smith, yeah. says Sarah. Jaden Smith, let's see how many of our 100 people said Jaden Smith. It is Jaden Smith. 28 is the only score we have at the moment, and Jaden Smith passes it. 17. Very well done indeed. Yeah, the son of Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith, Jaden Smith. You really went to see him live. I went to see Justin Bieber and he came out. And wow. I just, that was it. Gone, crying, everything. Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, anything really? to delay Justin Bieber, I'd be the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much indeed. Now, then, Nipa. Um, I think I know a few, but they're quite popular ones. Um, I think the bottom next to Jaden Smith, is it Lauren Hutton? Lauren Hutton says, Nipa, let's see if it's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Lauren Hutton. It is Lauren Hutton. 28 is our high score. 17 is our low. You passed the high score. You passed the low. Look at that. <laughs> Lauren Hutton's a priceless answer. Very well done indeed, Nipa. That adds £250 to today's jackpot. Takes the total up to £1,250. Scores you nothing and earns you our undying respect. That's brilliant. Great work, Nipa. Very, very rarely get pointless answers uh, on this round. Yeah, she's uh, she continued her modelling career past 70, Lauren Hutton. Amazing. She was in American Gigolo with Richard Gere. That was back in 1980. So what's that, 30, mm. you know, <gasps> nearly 40 years ago. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. We're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. Nothing was the best score of that past Nipa. Well done, Nipa and Ben, looking pretty strong on the back of it. 17 is where we find Sarah and Abby and 28, Kirsty and Stevie. So, Stevie, let's hope there's a nice obscure face on that board that you recognise and uh, someone else doesn't nab it before it gets to your turn. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, so, Ben, remember, we are looking for the names of any of these uh, Vanity Fair's international best dressed list 2017. I can only name one. Um, it's Barack Obama. <laughs> Barack Obama, says Ben. OK, <laughs> Nipa, <laughs> looking, showing great forbearance there, if I may say. Uh, here is your red line. Uh, let's see how far down the column we get with Barack Obama. It's right! 88. Yes, a big score there. That is very much a tale of two halves there on, uh, on podium mm. four. You never know, though. You never know. You never do. <sighs> Poor old Nipa. After, after all of that homebrew as well, and then no. this. <laughs> Thanks very much, Abby. Um, I only know two that are left, and they're both going to be really high scorers, and I'm just trying to think which one might be lower. I'm going to say... Harry Styles, just because he's got two names, so... 
He's, he's got <laughs> two. Yeah, animal. He's got two names. <laughs> Harry and Styles. Uh, let's see. Now, listen, here is your red line. You get below that red line with Harry Styles, you're through to the next round. Ben and Nipa, well, you never know. There could be a, just a little chink of light there. You never know. Let's see. Um, how many of our 100 people said Harry Styles? It's right. Oh, you're safe. 43. Taking your total up to 60. Well played, yeah, very, very uh, famous. Famous for all sorts of things, including being um, double-named, famously double-named. Yes, <laughs> yes. So rare. It is <laughs> very rare. Um, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Stevie, things have changed a little bit. Slightly less pressure on you now. You have to score 59 or less. Do you fancy talking us through some of these people? Well, I couldn't talk you through it. I think I know three, but I think I'll go for Jeremy Irons. You're going to go for Jeremy, Jeremy Irons. Irons? OK. Jeremy Irons, there is your red line. Let's see how many of our 100 people recognised Jeremy Irons. That's right. You've done it. Oh, you've done it easily. Look at that. 20 for Jeremy Irons. Very well done. Taking your total up to 48. Well played. Those last two answers work together in, uh, in, in the wardrobe department on this show. Um, what happens is Jeremy Irons, then Harry Styles. That's how they... Uh... <laughs> That's how... Uh, there you go. That's good. There you are. Shall we go through the rest of this? There's some, uh, there are some tough answers up here. I know some people at home would have done brilliantly. Um, next to Harry Styles is uh, Janelle Monáe. Would have scored you one point. Very well done if you said that. Uh, next to Janelle Monáe... Dev Patel. Dev Patel. She would have scored you seven. Uh, this next one's a pointless answer. Uh, oh, it's uh, Manuel Macron's wife, Brigitte. Yeah, absolutely. It's a pointless answer. Well done if you said that. This next one is a pointless answer as well. It's Queen Letizia of Spain. Then next, Jeremy Irons. Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. She would have scored you eight points. The brilliant Donald Glover writes and stars in Atlanta, amongst many other things. Three points for that. You're absolutely right about Rihanna. Famously has one name as well. Though scores fewer points than Harry Styles. 38 points for her. Uh, next to Roger Federer is Charlotte de Gainsbourg. She was a uh, pointless answer as well. You then got Solange Knowles, would have scored you one point. Uh, and not a great photo of the, the next gentleman. Is uh, Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau, and he would have scored you five points. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so we have come to the end of our second round, which means we have to say goodbye to another pair. I'm afraid Ben and Nipa Barack Obama did for you, Ben. I'm sorry. Too high a score, even for Nipa's brilliant pointless answer. <laughs> to carry over the line. But uh, we will see you again next time, when I'm sure the, the, the subject matter will fall more favourably towards you, I hope, Ben. Uh, Thank but thanks you. so much for playing, Ben and Nipa. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it is now time for our head-to-head. -head. <laughs> Congratulations, Abby and Sarah, Kirsty and Stevie. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £1,250. Well, here we are in the head-to-head, -head, which means from here on in you can confer before you give your answers, and the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Not a great deal to separate you, actually, at this point. We've had really good answers from each pair, uh, and now you can pool your knowledge. I think you should be pretty evenly matched, so this should be exciting. Best of luck. Let's play the head-to-head. Here comes your first question, and it concerns chess. <laughs> Richard. Yep, five clues now to facts about chess or concerning chess mm. in some way. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five clues, and here they come. We have got... Film, first released in the UK in 2017, starring Tobey Maguire as Grandmaster Bobby Fischer. The coordinates of the square furthest from A1. The musical Chess that premiered in 1986 was written by Tim Rice and two members of this Swedish group. The board is made up of this number of light and dark squares. And this piece can jump over others during its L-shaped move. Let me read those again. Film, first released in the UK in 2017, starring Tobey Maguire as Grandmaster Bobby Fischer. The coordinates of the square furthest from A1. The musical Chess that premiered in 1986 was written by Tim Rice and two members of this Swedish group. The board is made up of this number of light and dark squares. And this piece can jump over others during its L-shaped move. There we are, five clues to facts about chess. Abby and Sarah, you're our low scorers at this stage, uh, so you get to go first. 
What do you think? I think we know we know two. We just can't decide. I think one will be lower, and Abby thinks the other will be lower. So, I don't know. Well, I didn't know the one that you said. Did you know the one that I yeah. said? You yeah. know that. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. We'll go for yours then. Okay. We're going to go for the number of squares. Sixty-four. Sixty-four. Say Abby and Sarah. Sixty-four. Now, Kirsty and Stevie, the board is all yours. Um, I've actually just That's started really learning like chess that. last week. Um, I think we would go for the. The bottom one? Uh, the bottom one. I think we'll go for the knight. OK, you're going to go for the knight, for the bottom one. So we have 64 and we have the knight. Um, Abby and Sarah have gone for 64, the number of squares. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said 64. <laughs> 64 scores 37. Not bad. Kirsty and Stevie have gone for the knight for the bottom piece. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the knight. It's right. 49 for the knight. Well done, Abby and Sarah. After one question, you are up 1-0. Uh, it's Phil. The rest of these, then, will start in the middle. The, uh, the musical chess uh, written by... Abba. Abba, yeah. Benny and Bjorn with Tim Rice. Sir Tim Rice. Sir Tim Rice. Uh, 62 for that. The coordinates of the square. Well, you can work this one out. Yeah. H8. H8, absolutely. 22 points for that. And do you know the, the title of this film? No, I don't. I'd heard the title of this film. I didn't realise this is what it was about. Uh, it's called Porn Sacrifice. Ah. Oh. Ah, all ah. in the spelling. Would have scored you three points. I wondered why it wasn't an 18. I had what I really had yeah. wondered that. <laughs> our, uh, our local takeaway does a prawn sacrifice, oh, which is lovely. Mm. 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 How delicious. Oh. Uh, thank you very much indeed. OK, here comes your second question, Kirsty and Stevie. You get to answer it first, but you have to win this one to stay in the game. Good luck with that. Um, our second question is all about... cheesy dishes. Mmm. Mm. We're going to give you the name now of five cheesy dishes from around the world, but we've removed alternate letters from them. Can you tell us what they are, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five cheesy dishes, and here they come. We have got A, S, A, P, N, E, Mm. B, F, N, U. Mm. Mm. C, T, R, I, L, T, E. Mm. D, P, O, G, M, N, L, N, H. And E, Q, E, A, I, L, S. OK, there we are. Five cheesy dishes. Kirsty and Stevie will go first. Um, we know a few. Um, I think we're going to go for the last one. Uh, quesadillas. Quesadillas. Yeah. Quesadillas, yeah. say Kirsty and Stevie. Quesadillas. Now, Abby and Sarah. We know three, don't we? Yeah, I'd go, for, I'd go for... What, what is A? I don't don't talk so, to him. OK, so I think A is sarg paneer. B is fondue, C, I don't know, I wouldn't know, D, is that lunch? lunch? Yeah. Go for A. 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 Yeah. Right, OK, we're going to go A, sarg paneer. Sarg paneer, say Abby and Sarah. So we have quesadillas and we have sarg paneer. Kirsty and Stevie went for quesadillas for E. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It's right. 21 for quesadillas. <laughs> Slightly higher than I was expecting. Uh, quesadillas, 21. Um, Abby and Sarah have gone for sag paneer for A. Let's see how many of our 100 people got that. Oh, look at that. Down to nine for sag paneer. Very well done indeed. Which means... Abby and Sarah, after only two questions, you're straight through to the final 2-0. It's a very good answer, yeah. Um, you gave us the answers to a couple of the others as well. It is fondue. B, it's a big scorer, as you'd imagine. Would have scored you 67. You're quite right about Ploughman's Lunch as well. 56 for that. Uh, now, C, this is an alpine dish of cheese, bacon and potato. Oh, gee, I know. Mm. I sort of know what it is. I know it ends in e double -T -E, oh, well, 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 well done, Professor. Fet. It's F. It it literally, the audience are shouting it out to you. What is it? It's... it's... What is it? Tartiflette! Tartiflette! I knew. I knew it was flat. 
Yeah. It's tough to, well done to the audience. Well done. Uh, and that was scored one point. Terrific answer. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. We are at the end of our head-to-head -head round. We have to say goodbye to one of our pairs, Kirsty and Stevie. I'm afraid you are that pair. But you'll be back next time, which is great news for us. And I'm sure you'll do just as well, if not maybe even one click better. Uh, but meantime, thanks so much for playing, Kirsty and Stevie. <laughs> but for Abby and Sarah, it's now time for our pointless final. Congratulations, Abby and Sarah. You've seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £1,250. Well, you've done so well. And here you are in the final playing for a jackpot with a slight uh, uh, pointless boost in there as well. Um, now, as always, you have to choose your category for this last round. Is there anything you particularly like to see up there? We won music, films, TV or countries. And that's it. Yeah. OK, well, let's see what the choices <laughs> are. Uh, today's batch looks like... This, jazz albums, watery film stars, battles, poetic language. Poetic language. Do you trust yeah. yourself? Yeah, I do. You trust it? Poetic yeah. language, you'll know it. Yeah. OK. OK. <laughs> it's on you. Don't kill me. <laughs> OK, you're going to go for? Poetic language. Poetic language, Richard. I think if you've got an, an, an English literature degree, you, you must do, surely. You must do. We're looking for any of the following, please. We're looking for any word of six or more letters in To Autumn by John Keats. We're looking for any word of six or more letters in the poem The Tiger by William Blake. Or we're looking for words of six or more letters in Sonnet 116 by William Shakespeare. That's the one that starts, let me not to the marriage of true minds. So words of six or more letters in any of those poems, please. Obviously, we won't accept marriage in that last one. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. And all you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Right, go it's going to have to be the tiger. I know the full first verse. Right, OK. Uh, tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. What forest, immortal, forest, forest, forest. forest. What immortal hand or eye immortal, immortal. could frame thy fearful symmetry? Symmetry, I think. What symmetry, was the other thing Frame. Oh, frame, not enough letters. <laughs> <laughs> symmetry, <laughs> immortal. Forest. Forests. And then I don't symmetry know, I can't think forest. the second half of it. Come on, who's going to know immortal? <laughs> symmetry. <laughs> symmetry. Symmetry. Forest. An immortal. Wait, forest. F -O forest. In the forest. Forest. OK. Symmetry, forest, immortal. Yeah. What other words did you say? There might be more Tiger, to tiger, one. burning mm -hmm. bright in the forest of the night. OK. Go what on. immortal hand or eye could frame that fearful symmetry? Fearful. Fearful. Right, what are we going for? I think fearful symmetry in immortal. Ten seconds left. Fearful, symmetry, symmetry immortal. immortal. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Oh, it is. It, it is, it is, is yeah. OK, you happy with those? Yeah. Should we stop the clock? Let's st it stopped itself. Look at that. <laughs> uh, now, uh, there we are. Your minute is up. Let's have your three answers. What are you going to give me? <laughs> immortal, fearful and symmetry. And these are all... all... from the tiger. Yeah. OK, immortal, fearful, symmetry. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? I think maybe... Symmetry. So random, symmetry. <laughs> <laughs> symmetry. No. OK, symmetry, symmetry goes symmetry. last. Least likely to be pointless? Fearful. Fearful. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order then, and here they are. We have got fearful, immortal and symmetry. Very best of luck. Nice jackpot of £1,250. What would you do with it if you won? Abby, you first. I really want a dog, so... <laughs> Just get a really big dog, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> was, was the size of the dog going to be affected by the size of the jackpot, yeah, do you think? Yeah, yeah. OK. OK, so a, a big kind of... Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Good. I've always wanted to go to New York, so I think that that could get me a plane ticket. Very good. Quid, yeah. Well, fingers crossed. Three good answers there. Let's hope one of those is pointless. Your first answer was fearful. In this case, and in fact in all cases, we were looking for words of six or more letters from The Tiger by William Blake. Let's find out if fearful is right. Let's find out if it's pointless for £1,250. It's certainly right. All it has to be now is pointless. Down goes fearful through the 20s, into the teens, into single figures, still going down six. Not bad. I think if someone knows that, they might never know. Six for fearful. That's a great score there. Unfortunately, not a pointless answer. So let's move on to your next answer, which was immortal. 
Again, we're looking for words of six or more letters from William Blake's The Tiger. Let's find out how many of our 100 people said immortal. It's right. So fearful took us all the way down to six. Immortal now takes us down through the 30s, into the 20s, we're into the teens. Will we make single figures? Yes, we will. We're going down to eight for Immortal. <laughs> OK, again, another great score. Not pointless, I'm afraid. So we'll move on to your third and final answer, which was symmetry. This is the one you thought was probably your best shot at a pointless answer. Let's find out if it is pointless, because if it is, it wins you £1,250. How many of our 100 people named symmetry as a word of six or more letters from the tiger? It's right. Well, fearful took us down to six. Immortal took us down to eight. Symmetry now takes us down into the teens, into single figures. Oh, I'm afraid it's nine. Oh, well. Fine. Fine. Well, I mean, nothing wrong with those answers. Three single figure scores there, which is uh, which is always impressive. But I'm afraid you didn't manage to find that all important pointless answer. So I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot. But you get to take home a pointless trophy each. So very very well done. You've been fantastic on the show, uh, Abby and Sarah. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, and well done for going for poetry as well. Nice to see a student taking the risk and going for something that they've studied. Let's take a look at the pointless answers, shall we, in the different poems. We'll start with To Autumn. John Keats, that's the, the poem that starts the season. I miss some mellow fruitfulness, all of that business. Abroad, asleep, oozings, red breasts, everything in that poem, apart from mellow fruitfulness, summer, spring season, winnowing and apples. Everything else was a pointless answer. Now, every single word in Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright that you gave us scored points, I'm afraid. Let's take a look at uh, some pointless answers from later in the poem. Aspire, deadly, furnace, sinews, distant, spears, terrors and watered were the pointless answers there. Burning would have scored you 37, Bright would have scored you 22. And then apart from the ones you gave us, Fearful would have scored you 6, Forests 5 and 1 point for Shoulder, Hammer and Heaven. Uh, and uh, for Shakespeare, he will be gutted because every single word of six or, or over was a pointless answer for Shakespeare. He's lost it, hasn't he? Mm. Um, <laughs> let's take a look at a few of them. Uh, alteration, impediments, remover, tempest. But, um, you know, if you know that uh, sonnet at all, you would have got yourself a pointless answer. Every single answer, pointless. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. And thank you, Abby and Sarah. I'm sorry you didn't win our jackpot today. That means it will be rolling over onto the next show when we will be playing for £2,250. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>